Hi there folks and welcome to this Calvarian demonstration of the integration pack for CA Service Desk. As you can see the integration pack is currently running with System Center 2012 Orchestrator Service Pack 1. The previous version is also supported. The integration pack gives us eight new capabilities. We can use the integration pack to close tickets, create objects, log activity, update objects, create attachments, monitor objects, get objects, and update the status of objects. So when I'm talking about objects, we're talking CA service test objects, so that's changes, users, incidents, that kind of thing. The configuration is quite straightforward, so we need to tell the integration pack about the server URL, the username, and the password that we're going to authenticate with. So let's move on to some simple use cases. So our very first use case is, is indeed simple. Uh, we're going to get change orders that are overdue, so things that should have started already. So you can imagine that this would be hooked into a larger process, perhaps patching or something like that. So once the change order has been approved and it's due to take place, we can actually do some work. So select the object type there, and there you can see the full list of object types that we have access to. So, as I say, we're using change order in this case. And if we take a look at the filters, so we can see that you have access to all of the fields that you may want to filter on, everything that exists for that change order type. I'm going to use the need by date, and I'm setting the need by date to be less than today. So uh, I'm just going to check that logging's turned on. Yep, yeah, okay. And I'm going to check that in and execute it now. It's just going to take a moment or two to complete. And then we're, there we go, we can see that that's done. So if we check the published data for that get object, we can see that there are actually two requests that are overdue. And we can scroll through there and we can see that uh, those fields have meaningful published data. Jolly good. So our next use case, we're going to create a change request. So um, the first thing we need to do is we need to get the contact details for the service desk and then we can create our new change order. So you can see that we have access to a number of fields. Once again, I've got uh, a limited number of those fields selected, just the, just the minimum really. There are a number of mandatory fields that we need to set. I've got those and I've added a couple of optionals in as well, but I've not set everything. You can imagine that this simple use case might be something to do with diagnostics. So some diagnostics have been run. We've identified that there's a problem. We're going to actually create the change, apply the changes and then close the change out so that everything's recorded. So executed that now and we can see we've got a change order number there that's 195 so I'm just going to search for that in the service desk and we can see that 195 exists there and that is for patching of web servers okay good so our next simple use case we're going to monitor for incidents so this time I'm using the monitor object I'm also going to use the log activity object and the update status. Uh, when I find an interesting incident, the, the kind of thing that I know I can fix, I'm going to trigger a child run book to run some diagnostics. In actual fact, in this case, those diagnostics are very simple. We're just going to run some WMI queries. Once we've executed those queries, we're going to update the incident and we're going to change the status of that incident. Um, I'm sure you can see that we, we could take this further uh, in, in, a, in a real world use case. So creating an incident for the hard drive being full and rather than just simple diagnostics, if we knew it was for a, for a full hard disk, then um, there's no reason why we couldn't put some remediation in there and delete some junk. So the monitor is running at the moment and there we can see that the monitor's just fired because it's found that interesting incident. Let's see if we can see the Windows diagnostics executed. 
So actually that's already completed and the run book is all completed. So the activity logs been updated, etc, etc. Let's take a look at that incident now and we can see there's a great deal of information been pasted into there. Just the kind of things that your second line support guys are going to love. Okay, good. So moving on to our last use case, uh, we're going to update an incident and we're going to add an attachment to that incident as well. So you can see I'm searching there for an incident active and the incident category is software. Just a simple file attachment, uh, not, not really a meaningful file, just a, a file that I found on my local orchestrator system, but obviously that could be some kind of config file or that, that kind of thing. And this, although I'm using it for incidents, we could equally be attaching files into our change system, uh, back out plans and that kind of thing. So that's running as we speak, and actually that's just completed. So let's uh, take a look. So we just need to get the incident number again. Ah, no logging turned on, sorry about that. Let's um, take a look in the service desk. So uh, I'm going to search for the um, assigned incidents. It was low priority. And we can see that the category, we only actually have one that's assigned to the software category. Let's open that up. And if we switch to the attachments tab now, <coughs> and we can see that we've got our attached file there. Excellent. So I'm sure you can appreciate that although there's eight very straightforward objects there, that it gives you a whole host of capabilities within the CA service desk. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for watching this demonstration, folks. If you'd like any more information about this integration pack or any of our other integration packs, please check out www.calvarian.com. Thanks.